Hello, this is Dr. Charmaine Gregory, and this is the Nocturnist Diary. I just wanted, I'm on vacation, and I had an inspiration that came to mind, and I figured that this is something that people might want to know about, and that is how do you combat seasickness or motion sickness while you are on a cruise? And so, as you can see, I'm on a cruise. Uh, behind me is um, <clears throat> Moon... Uh, Half Moon K um, and you know uh, this trip we didn't end up having any problems with seasickness thankfully but there are some things that you can do to prevent this from happening and to um, prepare yourself so one of the first things that you can do is before you get on the cruise make sure that you have a good amount of rest make sure that you're not exhausted make sure that you're not um, functioning with a partially empty tank and that you are not markedly fatigued because this is going to help you help your body to be in uh, full function for the cruise and to diminish your opportunity for developing seasickness so that is number one making sure that you're well rested number two is you can bring with you anti-emetic or anti-nausea medicines so there are several anti-nausea medicines that are available over the counter one such medicine is called Jamamine so you can get that over the counter and bring that with you you can also ask your doctor to prescribe you a medicine called scopolamine which is another anti-nausea medicine and it comes in a pill form it also comes in a patch that goes behind your ear so you can place the patch uh, just before you set sail or you can take the pill before you take before you set sail and that will help to diminish the amount of nausea and seasickness that you are likely to encounter all right the third tip that i have for you is if you find that you are starting to get some of the symptoms of seasickness which include nausea vomiting headache these are all potential symptoms of this problem make your way to a area on the ship that has fresh air where you can get a visual on where you are because a lot of what seasickness is related to is a disconnect between what your eyes is seeing your eyes are seeing what your brain is processing and what your inner ear is also processing so when you're inside the cabin if you're in a cabin that is not providing you with a balcony or some way for you to to see the motion then your brain is talking to the inner ear which senses the motion and causes you to feel out of sorts and causes a cycle of seasickness to occur so by getting to an area on the on the on the ship where you're able to get some fresh air wind blowing on your face you are able to visually register the motion that helps to diminish the amounts of the effect of the problem the next thing is um, even before you get on the cruise and you're making your plans for the cruise you can uh, try if you're going on a route that is particularly known to be choppy so uh, one particular example of that would be traveling in the Caribbean uh, during hurricane season which is high wind season uh, June through October basically trying to get a cabin that's in the middle portion of the ship those cabins usually go fastest because people are well aware of this phenomenon and tend to get those cabins first so if you know that you potentially might be on a rocky um, time of year and you're concerned about that, then getting a midship cabin might be in your benefit because in that way you're diminishing your opportunity for having this problem, okay? The next tip is to eat well, okay? So try your very best to avoid uh, foods that are high in grease and very spicy things that can potentially trigger nausea on their own I would definitely avoid those items because then it'd be very difficult for you to differentiate between nausea that is stimulated by the food that you're eating 
versus nausea that is stimulated by actual seasickness. Another thing is avoiding excess alcohol is also going to be to your advantage because what alcohol does is it works as a diuretic, which means that it makes you pee quite a lot and that can lead to dehydration. Dehydration can worsen the symptoms of seasickness and also decrease your threshold for getting it. So definitely keeping your alcohol consumption at bay will also be in your best interest if you're somebody who is prone to getting seasickness. The other um, aspect of eating is if you're starting to feel it, definitely try to get something very bland in your system. So get a piece of bread, um, maybe get a saltine, and that will kind of help to calm down uh, at least the gastric portion of the process and hopefully help you to be able to um, do some of the other, men other mentioned uh, interventions to help you out with your seasickness. The next uh, suggestion is going to be to wear an acupressure band. So you can take Jamamine or Scopolamine or you can get an acupressure band. These are available at local pharmacies. They're also available uh, through Amazon so you can get those online prior to your embarkment and have that ready to go and wear it during your trip. And hopefully that will help out a lot with your potential for seasickness. And then the, the last thing is um, just make sure that you make good choices while you're on the ship. Um, be always aware of um, the things that you're eating, as I mentioned before. Stay well hydrated, so drink lots of water. Um, avoid highly spicy food. Um, avoid excess alcohol. And honestly, I think that um, these things will definitely help you to have the best success and enjoy your cruise with your family or with your friends or whomever you're going with. And I hope that these tips were helpful to you. And um, if they were, I hope that you will share this video um, with friends and others. And you will also comment below. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, this is Dr. Charmaine Gregory. And this is the Nocturnist Diary, and I hope that you will be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.